The Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre is a unique blend of industry, government and research partners working across Australian industry with key links internationally. The overall aim of this, uh, this research and what was important to Oricon was to develop a, um, uh, an understanding of uh, best practices in energy and water uh, efficiency retrofitting for public buildings. And there were three parts to that research. One was understanding what's happened around the world uh, in terms of um, uh, you know, leading edge uh, examples, um, uh, in particular around financing. Uh, and then from that to develop a, um, a set of guidelines and strategies that would work for the Australian market to encourage and, and support uh, energy and water retrofitting in public buildings. Uh, and then thirdly, to understand what the barriers are and really focus in on what would it take to, uh, to remove those barriers and un unlock opportunities uh, for more rapid uh, implementation of energy and water retrofitting for public buildings. We're fortunate in our project to have industry partners involved from both the government and private industry that are supportive of this research and see the value of this research for their organisations. So that gives us the drive you know, to deliver the, the outcomes that they want. The project team implemented the project in three phases. Phase one is to undertake a very comprehensive literature review including locally, Australia, and internationally, so that to understand what are the best practice in terms of financing mechanism and retrofitting guidelines. Phase two includes conducting two workshops, one in Queensland, the other one in Western Australia, that where we invited the government officials and industry practitioners to come into the workshop to discuss what are the barriers and strategies to overcome these barriers so that to have a successful implementation of the guidelines. Well it's looking at uh, anything within that particular building that can re be retrofitted to save water or energy such as changing uh, lights over from, from traditional lights to LED uh, low watt wattage type lights uh, to some more costly uh, type implementation strategies such as uh, retrofitting air conditioning systems. Recycling of uh, um, water, so we might recycle some grey water within our buildings um, with regards to maybe some source substitution strategies such as rainwater tanks or even putting on uh, solar PV and energy storage. These are all options that we can put on that either reduce or substitute traditional uh, power from coal-fired power plants or water from traditional sources such as surface water dams by alternative uh, methods or through conservation strategies that reduce the demand of those particular um, appliances or end uses. Traditional procurement methods are uh, not effective as they are seeking, uh, forcing or require a building owner or client to seek their own funding and then find a, uh, a service provider uh, to conduct a retrofitting project. We need procurement models that can handle the uncertainty and risk associated with these particular projects. For example, we need to incorporate much of the principles of alliance and partnering contracting. We need to be able to handle the uncertainty or risk associated with the return on investment of these particular projects. Uh, and we need to have uh, procurement models that can also minimise those risks for all the stakeholders involved in those particular projects. So monitoring and verification is a very important project. Why they need to do this? Because their payment, there's no upfront payment, their payment based on their performance. If they perform well, and if they predict this performance or achievement stage as well, so they will not suffer from a financial loss. If they do it properly, everyone will benefit from that, uh, including service provider and uh, client. And also, risk will be transferred from owner to service provider. So the main barrier we identified um, for the retrofitting industry is the lack of accessibility to um, initial uh, capital, which is required for uh, retrofitting projects. 
We therefore focused on uh, identifying the best international and domestic uh, practice in terms of financing mechanism which could help overcome this uh, limitation. Our finding shows that, among others, revolving loan funds provide the best um, financing option for the Australian context. Revolving loan funds are applied uh, extensively internationally, especially in the US, in a number of um, United States. And uh, they provide a number of benefits, just, such as low interest rate, and uh, they provide uh, accessibility to finance to uh, institutions and entities which otherwise would struggle to uh, qualify for credit. The main advantage, however, compared to, for instance, grants, is that a revolving loan fund will never deplete. It will uh, increase over time with the repayments of the loans that have been already issued, and therefore it provides uh, potentially a um, perpetual source of funds for viable retrofit projects. The results show the introduction of a revolving loan fund in Australia dedicated only for water and energy retrofits of public buildings would lead to a, a five-fold return of investment. And besides that, we would have also a number of environmental benefits and um, creation of uh, employment opportunities as well. Our proposed retrofitting guidelines for public buildings consist of these five steps. The number one is the project planning, which includes the formation of a project team and monitoring and exploring the opportunities for energy and water savings. The next step is the selection of an energy service company, which is known as ESCO. And that selection is done mainly from a pre-qualified list. And once the ESCO is selected, then they conduct an investment grade audit and develop a business proposal which includes the detailed cost benefit analysis and a risk assessment. And once the business proposal is approved and the contract is signed, then the ESCO they proceeds with the installation of the selected retrofit measures. And the final step includes the measurement and verification, which is important to determine, the, to analyze the performance of the retrofitted buildings. And our research showed that active involvement from four key stakeholders is an essential requirement to successfully implement a retrofit project. If this model is successful, and we've just, uh, this can be adopted by other states and can be a nationwide framework, uh, when uh, implementing retrofitting projects. Yeah, especially with the Paris Agreement that were signed two years ago now, uh, the Australia will have to commit to achieve certain sustainability targets such as carbon emission reductions. This is a way to do it in a um, cost-effective way as well. So not only the government would achieve um, environmental benefits that, are, that will be mandatory probably, but also will help reducing the cost. We also can create a new uh, sector where people are employed uh, retrofitting uh, buildings and that becomes a new service industry for Australia that we could potentially export overseas as well. Getting energy efficiency and water efficiency right in Australia is a big part of uh, our future in terms of keeping uh, our, uh, our economy um, you know, cost competitive, addressing our carbon goals, addressing you know, scarcity of resources and creating economic growth. So, you know, Oricon is, is proud to have collaborated with uh, Swinburne, Griffith and Curtin Universities on this research work looking at uh, retrofitting for energy and water efficiency in buildings. Uh, we think the, uh, the work that they've done will go a long way uh, to creating uh, better informed policies and, and supporting uh, strategies going forward uh, to really drive uh, improved performance and, and better outcomes in the public sector.